Good afternoon, fellow Plexers. I'm on a different headset today than what I normally record with because I'm working off from that little Optiplex 7th Gen i5 um, Dell system I bought. And I decided to try a fresh Linux install. And this time I installed just plain Jane Debian. The system has 16 gigs of RAM. It's a 7th gen i5 processor, which means it doesn't have the greatest iGPU. It'll get some things done, but this is a cheap system to grab just to make tutorial videos on. And um, that's about it. Besides, I decided to try an experiment. And my experiment was naming my user Plex, lowercase p-l-e-x to see what I'd have to do to gain permissions on the system with a Plex server install. So all I've done is download Plex, the Linux version, so you choose a distribution, choose Ubuntu 16.04, Debian 8 plus, Intel 64 bit. And you'll see I already have that downloaded not too long ago, a, a few minutes before 4 p.m. So I right clicked on it, opened it with a software install, installed it. And that's about as far as I got before I went to get my headset to connect to this system to then go on further. So again, my username is um, just simply Plex, lowercase Plex. So this is the brand new server. And oh, let's, let's show you one more thing, the rest of the setup. So I copied into the home directory on this system, my public domain test files, my media files, except that I named it dash home. So I have these different movie libraries. I have a little bit of music and I have two different TV show libraries. I also have the same folder on a portable USB drive, just an old Seagate little one terabyte drive. But now I've renamed this one dash USB so we can tell them apart. So let's go into the Plex setup. And again, I haven't done anything to set any permissions. Just installed Debian and used the username Plex lowercase. So I'll call this server Debian test. And let me uncheck this because I'm signed in with a separate Plex account that doesn't have access to my Plex pass nor have I set up this on my home router for, for port forwarding. So let's add a local library. So we'll, I'll do a movie library first. I'll browse for media. And you can see here, media public domain home, which is what I named the local folder. I'll go into my movie sort library or movie sort folder, movie library sort folder, and I'll pick my main movie library and I'll add that. I'll go into the advanced settings and, and I'm now recommending to uncheck use local assets if your file names are named great. Um, we don't want to pull anything local. We want Plex to make database matches based on just the file names. And then I like to change this to two, and that means if I have a movie that's part of a collection, Plex won't automatically create that collection until I have at least two of the movies. So now I'm going to add the library. Well, let's let's add a TV show library from the USB. Browse for media. Okay, so I don't see it, but I know it's this folder. I can click into it, choose my TV library sort folder, 
click the main one and add those shows. Now I'll click into the advanced and again I will uncheck use local assets and for a while now I've always recommended changing the the episode ordering to the TVDB. That's all I work out of for TV episodes. I don't work out of the movie database and there's a lot of benefits to the TV database that I won't repeat for the millionth time here. So I'll add this library. So now I'm just going to hit next, click done. And this is the new shared watch history that was just released. I don't know much about it, so I'm just going to set everything to private. I like the idea that you can watch together, but I'm, I'm not too keen on Plex being a, a social media platform, too. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to choose my preferred server as the new server for this web client. Sorry about that reminder on my phone. And I'll just leave this default. And I'm just going to cancel out of this. And here we are. We have my two libraries I added, this from the USB and this from the local. So let's start with the USB. Seeing this is all public domain, I can play a little bit. And it starts up off from the USB drive. So let's go to the movie folder. And let's do, let's do Big Buck Bunny. I can't get in trouble with that. And let me, there's multiple versions of this. Let me play the a lower quality version, the 1080p. Now again, there's no hardware acceleration enabled on this um, install. And it was a fairly higher bit rate than the other media. So that starts up fine. And again, this test bed system isn't the best hardware for a Plex server. It's, it's kind of marginal. Let's try the Big Buck Bunny again. And this time we'll play the 720 at 5.2 megabits per second for the bit rate. And it starts up much quicker. So again, all I did was install Debian. I picked Plex, lowercase p, l, e, x as, as my username. And because I did that, that's part of Plex's group, and it can see any files. If you search for this um, through Google, you'll see all types of different solutions. Some match what Plex says to do officially to gain permissions. But I just started reading everything, and I thought, well, why do I have to add permissions for the Plex user, for the Plex group? Why can't I just make the main user Plex and see what happens when I install Plex? And at least it worked out perfectly fine with this latest Debian install file. So I'm going to get this on YouTube, but I'm also going to try this with um, Ubuntu 22.04 and see if it works just as smooth. And maybe I'll combine videos. Maybe they'll be separate and I'll just, or maybe I'll just do this one and just give you the results of the other test. But so far, this is the easiest way that I know of to use Linux for a first time and to not have to play around with permissions. And if you're going to use Linux, I do have to mention this. Get yourself Ventoy. Ventoy is the best um, utility to boot multiple versions of Linux. Ventoy is a bootable operating system for a flash drive. And once you get it set up on your flash drive 
and there's a Windows installer. Once you get it up set up or set up on your flash drive, let me plug in my 256 gigabyte Ventoy flash drive. You simply copy a downloaded ISO to the flash drive. And when you boot off from the flash drive, you're given a, given a choice of all these different OSs to boot off from. Um, I don't know why I'm, I'm collecting all the old past elementary OS installs, which is what I normally use. And now I'm very interested in trying this method with a default elementary OS install, which I've been using since 2014. But the next test I'll do is plain Jane Ubuntu. So thanks for watching, and because I have only one screen with this testbed system, I can't hide this on the, on the other screen like I usually do. Happy plexing.